call uh, the zoning hearing to order. Today is August 21st, 2024, and the time is 9.32. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. All right, please be seated. All right, we have four items on the agenda today. I'd like to recognize our zoning staff to introduce the first case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Joe Saracino from the planning section, introducing CPA 2022-00012. This is a privately initiated map amendment to map 4B in the Lee Plan. That's the future sewer service utility area for Lee County Utilities. The amendment requests to add approximately 11.4 acres to map 4B. This property is already included in map 4A. That's the future potable water service areas. This request was previously transmitted by the Board of County Commissioners in 2020. However, before that came back for adoption, the applicant withdrew that application. There previously was a concurrent text amendment that ran with this uh, that, that would have amended the Lee Plan to allow limited commercial uses on the subject property. However, that, set, that uh, text amendment was withdrawn in uh, January of this year, January of 2024. So despite the name, this is only for the map amendment to map 4B. Uh, this parcel is on the eastern boundary of the Corkscrew Shore subdivision, uh, which is on map 4B, and map 4B resumes, as you'll see up there, about a mile and a half east to serve the place subdivision. There's a industrial plan development for mining to the north, and to the south and the east are conservation lands owned by South Florida Water Management District and Lee County. Uh, the applicant held an advertised public meeting on February 15, 2024, consistent with objective 17.3. Utilities usage enhances groundwater protection consistent with objective 33.1. Consistent with goal five, this helps promote the uh, availability of sewer service throughout Lee County, excuse me, goal 56, not goal five, sorry about that. Uh, this property is located within a one year well field protection per zone per map 4C of the Lee plan and use of utilities here is consistent with objective 63.1. This amendment is consistent with the surrounding properties Lee County Utilities has capacity to serve the subject property and level of availability of other public services will be analyzed in future submittals. The amendment is consistent with the Lee Plan. Staff and the LPA both recommend that the board transmit the proposed amendment. And staff is available for any questions. All right, does the board have any questions for staff at this time? No. Seeing none. Um, do I call for an applicant uh, at this time? You want to make a presentation? Yep, come on up. Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. For your record, my name is Richard Aiken. I represent the applicant in this matter, which is uh, Small Brothers. Uh, I, I do have a brief presentation here I'll give to you. It is, I, I will make it brief, as I think Mr. Saracino was quite thorough in his presentation. Um, I do have with me here Margaret Imblich, who's the project planner, and Bruce Lampett, who's with Small Brothers, if you have any questions of them. Uh, Mr. Saracino already showed you the location of the property. You can see it's outlined right there. It's uh, at the corner of Alico Road and Corkscrew Road. It's just to the east of Corkscrew Shores. And uh, Wild Blue's on the other side of Corkscrew, just to the west. The request is, is very simple, as Mr. Saracino said. All we're asking is to amend the Lee County Utilities Future Serv Sewer Service Area map, which is map 4B, to place the property on it. That's it. We're not asking for any other map or text amendments as part of this application. Uh, the property is already, already located within the future water service area. Staff recommended transmittal, and the LPA voted 5-0 to zero to recommend transmittal as well. I did want to give you just a little bit of history on the property. The property has currently got a community commercial zoning on it. It's had that since 1982. It also has, as part of that zoning, a variance that was approved to permit an on-site sewage treatment plant. So one of the benefits of this map amendment to add it to the future sewer service area map is to get rid of that potential, get rid of the potential for sewage which is consistent with the Lee Plan. Lee Plan Goal 56 uh, seeks to provide sanitary sewer service throughout Lee County, so adding this to the future sewer service area map would further that goal. There's also Objective 33.1, which promotes the protection of groundwater within Southeast Lee County. We believe that it would further that objective by, again, eliminating the potential for this to be a have uh, septic or an on-site package plant. 
Mr. Saracino already showed you the current MAP 4B, but just to highlight again, it, we already, MAP 4B is already extended to Corkscrew Shores directly adjacent to the property. We did have a public information meeting and there were no attendees from the public during that meeting. There were also no attendees from the public at the LPA, although there may be some here today, obviously, as it's a matter that they could, could come. Um, so in summary, we do believe that it is consistent with the Lee plan and uh, furthers the goals and objectives, as I just stated. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions if you have them or to ask either Ms. Imblage or Mr. Lampe to come up with their questions. Commissioner. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, real quick, I, just, I was out there this week checking it out. The, um, so I know they already put this section, just so my colleagues understand, this uh, up to Lake Road is already being four lane out there. Now that road project has already started. Uh, they already started installing the traffic signal bases there at Lake and Corkscrew. Uh, on that side of the road, next to Corkscrew Shores, I know that we're putting in water retention there. Is the road going in directly next to that? Yes, Is that going to affect the property here? I know that's already been cleared as far as the retention pond is going to go farther back behind this property. So the answer is, will it affect the property? I think it already has affected the property. There was an, an order of taking where the, the, there's a, on the western side against Corkscrew Shores, there's a 90 foot easement that there's both an interest in favor of the water management district and the county. And the county took another 50 foot easement for drainage within that. And so right. the county's already got that interest and any development or design of that's gonna have to take into account those existing easements, which is something we're gonna have to work through. And same with the right of way. There's already been right of way taken there, which are things that will have to be taken into consideration. So it's moving along. The, the pipes are on the ground already and the construction already started. So thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant this time? No. All right. Uh, I will call for public comment. I have a card, Marsha Ellis. Um, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Marsha Ellis, for the record, I spoke originally on the small brother CPA that rolled through and was withdrawn because there has been a hydrologic study um, uh, across the street from this property. 20% of our, our water exits uh, from my neighborhood um, through uh, the Youngquist property, and there's been discussion of uh, maintaining a hydrologic connection um, because we get underwater. If you drive out there right now, you're gonna see that our ditches are full, our ponds are overflowing. Um, I understand there's an eight acre lake that, the, uh, that, that was approved back there. I really spoke against that as well because we know that these retention ponds add to localized flooding, which is already a problem in the saturated area. Most importantly, uh, we have not, my husband and I have not received notice of any movement on this, even though we've spoken out. Um, I continue to put in comments where I utilize the resources and the letters that I pulled together on this small brother's property. The previous zoning that's referred to is for a trailer park <laughs> approved in 1982 that literally had a package plant in the front ditch. No one built that because you would literally have to live in a submarine in order to be able to live live on this property, it is so wet. We know that that area of Flint Pen, which is considered a jewel in our community, it backs up, it's totally saturated. And when it's saturated, then we know the Imperial River is gonna exceed its flood, its flood stage. It, this is a really significant hydrologic connection. It has no business ever being developed. And what I see taking place in it um, so far is really concerning to me because I don't think that it it's going to fulfill some of those commitments that were made to us to improve our hydrologic connection. And I have a problem with not being noticed and having the opportunity to be able to bring this forward in meetings um, and bring it forward to the LPA, be able to uh, put together more detailed PowerPoint presentations such as what I presented last time to accompany this transmittal. I request that the PowerPoint presentations and the letters that were put together for the LPA and the Board of County Commissioners uh, consideration last time be associated to move forward with this transmittal. Um, and I will be adding other comments to it as well. Um, I'm just, would really, urge you to consider um, how much constraint, how much use is being placed on this property, including our well fields, and the kinds of risk that we get into when we start piling so much on a sensitive property. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak on, on this item? Okay, seeing none, I will close public comment. Would the applicant like to address the concern? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And once again, Richard Aiken. 
so uh, certainly appreciate the comments. Uh, I, the, the comments about the concerns over the, the well fields and things of that nature, again, I think that this amendment actually uh, is beneficial in that regard because, once again, what we're doing is adding it to the future sewer service area map. That's the only thing we're asking to do, and that eliminates the potential for the package plant that was previously approved back in the 1980s and the ability for septic. So to that, to the extent there's sensitive concerns with regard to the groundwater, I think that this amendment is a positive in that nature. Uh, with regard to the concerns about flooding or uh, connections with drainage, uh, this is a, a plan amendment simply to add it to the sewer ser future sewer service area map. We're not at a zoning stage. We're not at a development order stage. We're not there. It's very straightforward simply to add it to the future sewer service area map and those concerns, while they may be concerns that need to be looked at at some point in time, we're not really at that stage at this point. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions or any further comments? I just want to say before this came up uh, over the last couple of years, uh, we already, like Richard said, we already very active with the eight acre lake retention. So the water runoff from the road, which is across the street from my active mine. Um, so that's going to recharge the aquifers with that water retention back there on the south side of the uh, Corsica Road. So, all right. Uh, any further discussion? No. All right. Do I have a motion? I move that to be transferred. Second. And I have a motion from Commissioner Pendergrass. I have a second from Commissioner Romaine. Uh, any further discussion? Any objections? Seeing none, item moves unanimously five to zero. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, I'd like to recognize zoning to staff to introduce the second case. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, I'm Adam Mendez. I'm a senior planner at the Community Development Zoning Section. The next, next case before you is in reference to DCI 2023, number 34, Alba Trading Post. The subject property is approximately two acres in size. It's on the south side of Palm Beach Boulevard at its intersection with Stiles Road. You can see from this aerial, the property abuts the Alva Fire Station directly to the south, uh, a Dollar General to the west, and across Stiles Road is an auto upholstery business. The subject property is located in the urban community future land use category and is also located in the Alva mixed use overlay. The subject property is currently zoned commercial along its Palm Beach frontage where the building currently exists. The remainder of the property is zoned agricultural is in that dark green shade south of the commercial building on the property. The request before you is to rezone the property from its commercial C1A zoning designation and agricultural zoning designation to CPD to permit a maximum intensity of 7,000 square feet. Uh, of that, there is some outdoor seating area to retain uh, and renovate the existing building along the Palm Beach frontage. The applicant has indicated the immediate use of the property or the intended immediate use of the property is a retail brewery. However, there are some contingency uses such as retail office and business services that may occupy that space. The increased depth of the property is primarily utilized by extended parking. You can see that parking along Palm Beach Boulevard is retained by some deviations of approval in the recommendation before you. The hearing examiner's recommendation is of approval subject to conditions there were no participants of record on this case and staff and the applicant available for any questions. All right. Um, any questions for staff at this time? No. No. All right. Uh, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Good morning, Commissioners. Al Quattrone with Quattrone Associates. I don't have a presentation, but I'm available to answer any, any questions. All right. Uh, does the board have any questions for the applicant? No. no. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, there are no participants of record, <clears throat> um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve the item. Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve from Commissioner Greenwell and a second from Commissioner Pendergrass. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will, uh, any objections? No objections? Five to zero unanimous. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, uh, Dirk Danley from Lee County Zoning. The next case before you today is DCI 2350. The request is to amend an existing uh, RPD CPD, uh, specifically 38 acres of that RPD CPD, to replace 238 dwelling units and 50,000 square feet of commercial uses with 360 multiple family dwelling units with a maximum height of 60 feet. Uh, before you on the screen today is a master concept plan alternate being considered by the uh, request today. Um, 
and the recommendation from the hearing examiner was approval with conditions. There were two participants of record, and staff and the applicant are here with any questions you may have. Any uh, questions for staff at this time? Okay, uh, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Good morning, commissioners. Stacy Ellis Hewitt with Atwell representing the applicant. I do have the applicant representatives with, here with me as well. And um, we don't have a presentation, but are here for questions and also to respond to anything from the public. Any questions for the applicant at this time? All right. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have, uh, there were two, uh, I have a card also. Uh, okay, Ryan um, Benalaro for public comment. Good morning. My name is Ryan Vatilaro. I represent Serendipity Mobile Home Park. Serendipity is a mobile home park that is adjacent to the subject parcel to the north. My client has uh, an issue with the current uh, plan as it uh, appears before you. My client uh, noted that there was no physical barrier between this new development and their mobile home park, and that's a concern for them. They feel that there should be a fence or a wall or some other form of barrier that is customary for this type of um, development. The mobile home park in this um, multifamily property are two very different uses. Although they're both residential in nature, they have very different clientele, both from a uh, socioeconomic status and also from uh, a behavioral and, and customary status. The uh, plan before you has a large retention pond, and that satisfied one of Serendipity's concerns about the drainage but there is a concern that there will be movement of people and other things across the property line, maybe to fish in that pond or to access <coughs> the um, multifamily development for any other purposes, such as to use any amenities or something like that. There, we understand, Serendipity understands that there is you know, native vegetation and uh, a drainage swale between the two properties but Serendipity feels that there could be some sort of fence or wall constructed um, between the two properties, even if it's not, not adjacent or on the property line, somewhere on this new development's property to have a physical barrier. And Serendipity feels that it's a safety issue as well as an aesthetic issue. And they believe that um, the board should consider whether or not there should be a uh, physical barrier buffer between these two properties. Thank you. Also, uh, Brandon George. Brandon George here. He's not here. He's not here, okay. All right, uh, does the applicant wish to address the, any concerns or their concerns? Yes, thank you. For the record, Stacy Ellis Hewitt again. Um, the site doesn't require a buffer between the two uses, but the historical zoning has always had a 30-foot buffer along the North Park property line, and the applicant has chosen to continue to provide that 30-foot buffer along where the residences are, and uh, a 10-foot buffer between the lake. Now, there's in addition the easement, a 20-foot drainage easement and ditch that runs right along the property line. And then in addition to that, we're also providing the 30-foot type F buffer, which is gonna have 10 trees and a double staggered hedgerow, planted at 48 inches and maintained at 60 inches. And then by the lake, we're gonna have five trees per 100 linear feet and a double staggered hedgerow as well. So a physical barrier is being provided above and beyond what's required in the code. And that's what has been reviewed with staff and um, recommended for approval by the hearing examiner as well. And I do appreciate the public coming out and offering the comments, but um, we feel that we're doing a 50 foot basic buffer. And in addition, there's also right now some garages proposed there that are gonna pro provide some additional um, separation as well to the residential units. 
So we believe that um, we're providing adequate buffer and separation. Okay. Does the board have any questions? Yeah, yeah uh, thank Commissioner you. Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the type of plantings that will take place, um, like for instance, in my my community, we have like uh, kluchas and they seem to grow together so closely and so thickly that you couldn't walk through the bushes to get to the property on the other side or of, of them. Is that similar to the type of buffer that you're describing here? That's the intent is a double staggered hedgerow so that they do prov provide that physical barrier. It's like a green fence basically in a way. Correct. Okay. All right. I think that satisfies the concerns of the community to the north. I understand why they asked about it, but I, I, I think that's a pretty thick buffer. It's a pretty wide buffer too. It sounds like wider than what's called for. So yeah. thanks very much. Right. Thank okay. you. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion for approval, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Com approval from Commissioner Hammond. We have a second. I'll second. Second from Commissioner Sandelli. Any further discussion? Any objections? Seeing none, item moves unanimous. Uh, please introduce the fourth item. Sharon Badam Chief from the County Zoning for DCI 2023-00023. This is an approved plan development and they are requesting to amend the master concept plan and the schedule of users. This project was approved in 2020, year 2020 for 75 residential units, a marina and 30,000 square feet of commercial. The request today is to, they, they have six uh, changes they are proposing. One is to change the residential units shown in here from townhouses to multifamily. The height or the size will not change. It's just the type of structures, as opposed to you know, having a residential multifamily, as opposed to having in townhouses. Number two is to allow for the larger building that was approved for 55 residential units, allow 55 residential units or a 240 room hotel. And number three is to amend the master concept plan to show more amenities on the rooftop. Rooftop was approved for with restaurants and amenities and uh, consumption on premises. They are expanding that now that we are, they are proposing a hotel. Other changes are basically show the actual design of the buildings along this canal here, which the original master concept plan just showed a box. Also, there's a change in height for the marina building. It's mostly parapet wall. And the last change is there's an existing building here that they were supposed to remove it. Now they are requesting to keep that uh, building. This case was heard by the hearing examiner and recommended approval. At the hearing, they asked to add a consumption of premises for the playground area, which is in this area. And staff did not support that, and hearing examiner recommended denial of that. Beside that, Staff and hearing examiner are uh, both agreeing on the changes and recommending approval. There were six participants of records for this case. Does the board have any questions for staff at this time? Thank you. Okay. Seeing none, would the applicant like to make a presentation? Morning, for the record, James Ank, Ank Engineering. Um, 
this is a case that's been around since 2016. Uh, some of the commissioners are familiar with the history behind it. It is an approved case, and as Sharam said, we just asked for some changes. Uh, fill it a townhome is we're making them flats instead of vertical, better for the market. Uh, the big change was to transition 55 of the approved residents to 240 rooms, which is similar. Ted Tresh is here on the traffic. It's a little increase, but it's not a major increase. It's just kind of the, the transition. Uh, it's important to note that the marina portion is under an old development order. It is under construction. We are we are physically building the marina portion of this right now and, and hope to have the other parts coming online in the next 18 months or so. Um, available for any questions and then comments after public comments if need be. Board have any questions for the applicant? No. I just want to thank you to James and for your input. Like you said, it's been going on since 2016. I know our staff did a great job four years ago, I believe it was, when before we went before the governor's cabinet and they approved this of road, yes. the local appeal process. So here we are many years later and we're still done with it. Yeah, this, this project actually started for me in 03. Right. So <laughs> it's been through can, quite a long thing, but we're, and, right. we're here where we can actually build this, this beautiful facility and, and we think that uh, going through the hearing examiner, we agree totally with uh, the hearing examiner's recommendation. Anybody? Oh, okay. Um, we, there are six participants of record, uh, so we'll start with Henry Blakely. All right, uh, Lori Abate, Deborah Maser, Stacy Maser, Joanne Seamer. Joanne. Morning. My name is Joanne Semmer. I'm a, a neighbor across the street from this project, but also chairman of the San Carlos Island Community Redevelopment Corporation and also program manager for Waterfronts Florida with the state of Florida. Uh, I worked on this project with Jim Inc. at the very beginning for the marina, and we did a great job on that. But when they came back for this project, it's not compatible with the community. It's a bad project. There's a lot of wrong information that's been given out by staff and the county attorney's office. It was, we took it all the way to the administrative law judge in Tallahassee and we had two zoning hearings where they denied it and the, and the administrative law judge denied it. But the governor and the cabinet overturned that, the judge's decision. They cannot meet hurricane evacuation it's, it's an ugly project. If you've seen the pictures, it's very ugly, and I'm going to have to sit and look at it where I live. There's, there's a lot more problems, but I can't speak to them right now, but you'll be hearing from me later. Um, do you know that they're going to bring over 3,000 car trips a day to St. Carlos Boulevard? That's their traffic engineer. Main Street is a two-lane dead-end road. And it is not consistent with the LEAP plan. We can ask Mr. Inc. It, part of it's in a water dependent overlay zone where the multifamily units are. Um, I'm just so frustrated with staff. Uh, also, Ms. Mr. Inc. said that, it, that they are working on it. They are not working on it. They do not have a de approved development order for the pro project they are working on. They've been tearing up the whole bottom and up at the, um, the northwest corner. That has nothing to do with the marina. I worked on the marina. I helped design the marina. I helped permit the marina in 2008. Um, I went and filed a code enforcement violation and the staff did not want to take my violation until I got an attorney on the phone. And then finally she wrote it up, but she told me it won't do you any good. 
And then I ended up filing a complaint with the governor's office, and then they shut down the project. Today, it is shut down. They are not working on it. They have not been working on it. They were dewatering nasty, nasty water into the canal with no DEP permits. And then when we brought that to light, they stopped that. And they actually dug the pipes out of the ground where they were dewatering. Mr. Inc. said that they, they just closed off the outflow. But I have pictures. I have pictures. Thank you, ma'am. Your time's up. Well, I just want to know, is there any accountability Not with Lee County Thank you, Attorney's Office and staff? Thank you. And Next also, up. I cannot understand Sharam. I'm going to need an, somebody to sit with Thank me you, and tell me what he's saying. Your time Thank is up. You. Thank you. Nicholas White. Right here. Okay, not here. Uh, does the applicant wish to address the concern present, presented today? Come on up. For the record, Jamaica again, I'm going to try to bring it back to reality and address just a couple of the comments. We're presently today not working because we've been putting in the auger cast piles and we're in testing and we'll go back to working under the, the permits. We do have an active development order. It's on the file. I don't remember the exact name. I think it's DOS 2016 at 00154 that we're working under. Um, county is very good. If we were out there with big cranes putting in 60 foot piles with no permit, I think we would uh, have code enforcement visiting us. And as far as the other comments, I don't understand them and have no comment. All right, this time the board have any questions or comments? Okay, no further discussion. Uh, do we have a motion? Uh, I'll move approval of the hearing examiner's recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Hammond. I'll second. Okay, we have a, a motion to approve from Commissioner Hammond, a second from Commissioner Sandelli. Any further discussion? Any objections? Seeing none, you know, I move, moves unanimously. I see no other business in front of us. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>